Okay, on the bench today, out of a 2002 Toyota 4Runner with a 3.4, we have the A340 Trans. So this is a four-speed rear-wheel drive, but this is also a four-wheel drive. 181,000 miles on the clock. So the customer comes in uh, with his car, and I'm talking to him. You know, he needs me to check his, uh, his forerunner. His transmission has no reverse. Okay. So I go out to the car, uh, and I sit in it. I put it in reverse, and I can feel like it's binding up. So what I do now is I move the shifter down one notch to neutral, and the car takes off just like I'm in drive. So I know the forward clutch is locked on. So now I start questioning the guy. I said, by chance, did, this, did you run it low on fluid? Because I gotta tell you, these transmissions historically are pretty good. And, you know, the last couple we did had the same problem with the, with the clutches locked on because it ran low on fluid. So then he was explaining to me, he goes, oh, now that you, you know, mention it, a cooler line popped out at the radiator. I, and, you know, there's a new radiator already installed, but the cooler line popped out, and where I was, you know, I tried to get the car home. I added, I went and got some fluid. I added it. I tried to get some, uh, try to get the car home. But he says I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have had it towed. And I said, yeah, that's exactly what you should have done. So now, driving it home, low on fluid. The follow clutch is burned, seized together with the steels. It will not release. So no matter what you do, the car is going to want to move forward. Except it can't move forward in reverse because now you have the reverse clutch on and the forward clutch on and it's like a tug of war, so it's not going to move. In neutral, uh, everything is released, but the forward clutch is locked on, so it's going to go forward. Even when you start this thing up and drive, it may lurch forward, but of course it's in park. I'm sorry, when, it, when you start the car up in park, uh, it, it, it may even lurch a little forward, but of course it's in park, so it's not going to move. So that's the story with that. He got all that fixed up, and I don't know if it was immediately after or, or what. He didn't really go into that, but he had it, he had it fixed. He may even did the radiator himself, but ever since then, he said he had no reverse. So we know what we're going to find. We know we're going to find the forward clutch locked together. So I figured we can open this. I took you know some of the bolts out of the bell housing, some of the bolts out of the extension housing. So what we'll do today is we'll take the extension housing off, the bell housing off. Uh, we got uh, some switches on the side, the neutral switch, which I actually uh, unscrewed this to see how easy the switch is gonna come out. And we have a temperature sensor here, so we're gonna loosen this, move this out of the way, take this out. Maybe drop the pan, pull the valve body out, and then we'll see what time it is, and then maybe tomorrow we can, uh, tomorrow morning, finish tearing this thing down. All right, we have an output speed sensor here, and there's a block here where the cable would go, so no cable, so we're going to be dealing with an EPC solenoid on this one. All right, and the, the installer here, so the thing doesn't flap around, just zip tied it to here, which is fine. Uh, I'm probably going to take the, probably going to take this out, so we'll just cut this, and we'll leave it on, but I've got, I'm, I'm probably going to take the harness out, just to... Uh, safekeeping and there's also a seal in there. I'm going to change it. Here is a servo here for the band. I'm going to take that out, those seals. And that's about it. So what I'll do is I'll get a little closer and we'll take some of the external stuff out and then we'll go ahead and take um, the two covers off, the extension and the bell, flip it, get the pan down and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so let me go a little closer on this and we'll get started. Okay, so let's get started here. Let's first see if we can get this output speed sensor out. Ah, okay, easy enough. And right out. All right. All right, now I'm gonna, I wanna take the neutral switch off. So this here is a, this thing is like loaded up with Loctite. 
So I had to use my other uh, air gun to break it loose because I'm having trouble with my DeWool. I gotta order another one. All right, so let's get this nut off here. switch out. Just got to be careful taking these out. Try to get behind it as low as you can. Okay. There is the neutral switch. All right, so here, you want to take this out, but we got this uh, line in the way. All right, so we're going to loosen this here. We need to bend this up that and then let's see if we can you know may have to get this out afterwards let's see maybe i'll take the bell housing out first okay so i just got two bolts left in the bell housing okay and i have the air tools as a backup place this little thing here okay Whoop. all right let me get this phone give me one second all right all right so let's see if we can get this out here Temp sensor, that aside here. Okay. Now let's get this. And maybe we can pull the pump out before we flip it. Now let's get the extension housing off. All right, so I got two bolts left there. Pliers. There's going to be that exciter ring, and there's going to be a keyway that holds it in place. Let's get the snap ring out. Let me get a different pair. snap ring. There it is. So then we're going to go ahead and pull, pull this out. The keyway just, all right, here's the little keyway that keeps that from spinning. Let's put that, that, Let's 
that's what that looks like. Okay. Uh, let's see. Right, we can get this. Maybe we can get this pump out. my 12 socket. Okay, all right, so I've got a little bolt here that I made to go along with my slide hammer piece. So it fits in there good enough where I can probably get the pump out. Sorry, screwdriver, pry bar to get the clutches out. See, with 181,000 miles on it, you can still see the writing on the clutches. I mean, that's how that's how good they are. Now, this transmission, I'm telling you, is a pretty pretty good training. And the reason why we get these in is because things like that happen. Okay. All right, so now we got two bolts coming into the center support, so we can't even get the center support out until we get the valve button. So now what we're going to do, we're going to get the pan out. Try to drain this thing as best I can. Sometimes with the weather, stuff like that, and things that have been down, and this being a 2002, some of these bolts not so easy to come out. So I kind of just broke them all loose, and they weren't too, too big. Gonna miss either. Oh, this is silicone. Okay. 
fan's not bad. You know, need the fluid stinks. I can smell the fluid. Okay. All right, so let's get the filter out. Oh, I have to put you guys on hold again. Yes, let me put you guys on hold. One second. Okay, so let's get this filter off. Detent off. Okay, so this has the detent and it has this little tension piece on top. So that goes on top just like that. All right, so now we have the shift solenoids, lock up solenoid. These are on off. Uh, this here that looks like a solenoid actually is an accumulator. And then we have the EPC solenoid here. All right, so one thing that I want to do uh, before just want to get a picture, make sure everything here is going to be up which is not a problem but I like to do it anyway okay so now let's unplug these solenoids This one, APC, let's get it out of the holder. See if we can get this thing. There we go, okay. All right, so again, the on off shift A and B. <clears throat> All right, so I believe, I think A and B shift lock up E EPC, but the um, these are both the same, so these are probably the shift solenoids. This is a little different, so that may be. I believe this is the lockup solenoid. All right, so you know what? While we're here, let's uh, pull this valve body off. These bolts are different lengths, but it's easy enough to figure out where they go. And here's the bracket for the wires. than doing a transmission. And the guy says, ah, I shouldn't have done that. Now it's too late now. Okay, valve body. All right, All right so now we have our drain back. Okay, got a little, very light spring. That is for the drain back. 
to take these accumulators out and lay them out. Those clutches look fried. I mean, I'm assuming it's the forward clutch, but it's probably more than one clutch fried with the low fluid level. Okay, this will take out. Ladies on the rig. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, all right, just had a, somebody bring the parts. All right, so I'm gonna take these out. Lay these out on the rig. servo out for the band so that has a clip. Let's get the clip out. Okay, so here's the, the snap ring. Now we'll see if we can get this servo to pop up. Get that out of the way. There we go. Alright, so here is the cover. A couple of O-rings. Here is the piston. And the return spring. Okay, that's what that looks like. Okay, now we're going to take the two 12 millimeter bolts out to the center support. Gotta find my 12. Let's see if I can get it with this a small gun. Oops. One. Okay. Right, so these we'll put here for now. And we gotta get the snap ring out that holds the center support in. We can put the two bolts in there and knock the center support out. Okay. So let's get the snap ring out. And I don't have much time. We'll have to finish tomorrow morning. But let's just do that so I don't have to get the snap ring out tomorrow morning. I don't know where my other little pry bar went. I think somebody's using it and they still have it. Because I don't have it. this. Here is that. This is beveled and the bevel faces. Alright, so now what we're going to do, we're going to take the two center support bolts, screw them in here. Alright, this doesn't come out so easy that I usually like get the seal puller and we'll just walk it out. Let's see. Okay, no, it's, it's moving, but. You know what? It's moving. Let's get the thing out and then we'll finish up tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can find my tool also.
Probably wasn't perfectly straight. Okay. All right, here's the center support. Might as well pull these out. These are the drums. And yes, we have a fried forward clutch. I'm sure we may have more fried clutch, but this is probably the problem clutch here. I will take a look at that. Put that back. All these burns are straight. All right, and then there's going to be a snap ring in here that will have to get out. I'm going to take the four tab uh, race out to get access to the snap ring. All right, now let's do that too. That right, we're going to need some snap ring pliers. Uh, my flashlight so I can see. Okay. Okay. All right. So we've got a band in there we got to get out. And the way we get the band out is there's a, uh, the anchor there. has a couple of very small C-clips. So we've got to try to get the C-clip out, slide the pin out without losing the C-clip. And then get the band out and we can take the rest out. There's an anti rattle clip in here I want to show you guys. All right, so I have to stop there because I have to go. So I'm going to catch up with you guys in the morning. We'll just, you know, shouldn't be much longer. We'll tear it down. We'll look at all the clutch, the clutches. We'll find a bad set, which I believe is the forward set. There may be more than one bad set. It looks like these intermediates may be a little burned. But uh, looks like here is uh, just what's locked together, which is common. That's what usually happens with this, you know, when these things run low on oil, it's always the forward clutch. All right, so let me uh, get going. I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow morning. All right, back with you this morning. So the next thing I want to do is get this band out. And there's two little clips, one on each side. So we've got to take this one out and slide the pin out this way to get the band out to check it and see if it possibly needs to be changed. So I usually use like a scribe and, and, and I get a magnet ready because that may go flying. So I kind of just hold a magnet over it and if it pops out, it'll hopefully get caught on the magnet. All right, so let's try that. Well, it landed in my hand. And there's a little clip. Okay. Now we'll get this pin out. Okay, that holds the band. Now we'll get the band out. So we got that snap ring out that holds the output shaft in. All right, so here is the planet. All right, now we're gonna get the sun gear. And there's the intermediate sprig. And that clutch is burnt out just by looking at this. Okay, and now we're gonna get a snap ring out. I found my little pry bar that I use it was on somebody else's toolbox. Okay. Alright, so here's the intermediate clutches. 
Yeah, these steels and stuff are bad also. No good. Okay, so over here, see, I don't know if I can get this out yet, but here we have the anti rattle clip that'll have to go in before you put that intermediate clutch in. Let's see if this will slide out yet. Yeah, okay, I think, I think it will. No, not yet. Maybe we'll get the center support out. You just can't forget to put it in before you put the center support in and put the transmission together. Okay, all right, here's another screw for that. Let's see if this will come out now. No. Okay. All right, so now we got to get the center support out so there's another snap ring. Let me just dump some of this here so I can see. So we should have a spacer, spacer in here on the uh, center support. I don't want to try to get out. The snap ring will come out. Okay. So here is that. Now we can get the snap ring out. up a little bit here. Okay. Here it is. This also has a uh, bevel that faces up. You can identify that snap ring with the holes in it here. All right, now, next thing we gotta do is the center support to come out. So we have to take the seal out. All right, there is the seal. That'll come new in the overhaul kit. Let's see how easy this is gonna come out. Sprig in here. Okay, so now here is that anti rattle. 
a clip that you don't want to forget to put in. That's for the low reverse and the intermediate clutch. Okay, so take the output shape out. The snap ring is out. Okay, just watch how these this clutch pack goes, because this here, you got the thick steel on the bottom. All right, and again, these things are pretty much like new with 180,000 miles on it, but I'm getting a banner kit. Okay, just watch how, how that steel, thick steel goes on the bottom. Okay, we got a washer, bearings, a washer goes on here. that and then you got your bearings here and on the back another open face bearing okay so just a low reverse piston is in there which is about three parts to that all right so the case pretty much is stripped I'll leave it like this for now So, let me get set up here and we'll take a look at the pump and whatever clutch packs are left over. You know, of course, the forward clutch pack, which is our problem. Take that apart. Look at the direct, the overdrive, open up the pump. All right, so let me just kind of get set up for that. And we'll be back in a few minutes and we'll finish it up. All right, so let's take a look at this forward clutch. Is I'm gonna probably need a snap ring. That thing's shut. I don't know if I'll be able to find one other than possibly the peel. Okay, so here is the problem. These are locked together. You got one, you got two clutches and three steels that are locked together. So that's why we were moving forward in neutral. Here's this whole thing. I'm sure the drum is okay if I clean it up. All right, so we got our rings here. We got a bearing and race here. Also, uh, you know what, I'll put that there because that actually belongs there. And this side, I got a bearing and rail that goes there. All right, so that's that. Here is the direct drum. The band rides on this drum. You got a washer here. This should come in the kit. Is, you know these things uh, like I said you can still see the writing on them 180,000 miles okay overdrive this should come right out got your overdrive spray here you got a race here four tip bearing here face bearing that's uh, races on the pump. Okay. So we'll take this off here.
see if I can get them off with this. I have my new DeWalt on board. is going to be fine. Okay, that looks good. Gears, these dots face up. I'll just hit this with a stone and flatten it out, but this uh, this pump is okay, I'm gonna sand it down a little bit but this is uh, reusable all right so I think that is about it for this 2002 Toyota 4 Runner with a 3.4, the A340 Trans. This is a four wheel drive. And again, the problem here line, cooler line popped out of the radiator, and the guy basically just tried to make it home and burnt the transmission out trying to do that. And again, I would like also like to say that, you know, historically these are good transmissions. Uh, anytime we pretty much get these in, um, it's usually because of something like that with a leak or, or, or low on fluid. The uh, later ones do tend to blow the front sections up, you know, the planetaries, uh, the ones with the input speed sensor. But still, those, even those are, you know, we don't get too many of them. We really never, ever got too many of those. This type of transmission, this 340 transmission. But overall, I think it's a good, it's a good unit. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Have a great day. We will see you next one.